Welcome, Hope Grown Faith, to another episode of our Monday Mom Mentor, where we are equipped and encouraged to nurture the hope of Christ in our homes. And today, I'm super excited to introduce you to Pamela Hinkleman, who is a mom who has nurtured the Christ in her home for several years, more than me. <laughs> and uh, Pamela, will you introduce yourself to us? Sure. My name is Pamela Hinkleman, and I live in Illinois right now, and I'm married to my hubby, the pastor. We have celebrated 35 years, almost 36 and uh, we have five grown kids and two grandsons. Four of our kids are married. And I am a writer, a speaker, and a life coach to midlife moms. And I also host the Midlife Mama podcast, That's Grace right. for the Next Phase of Parenting. <laughs> awesome. So ladies, if you have you know kids in that next phase of parenting, go listen to her podcast. <laughs> yeah. I love supporting midlife moms. And so what brought that passion into you? Oh gosh, I think it was because, well, I had a dream of writing three books and one of them was going to be about miracles. One of them was going to be about being a pastor's wife because that's such a whole, that's a whole thing in itself. And then the other one was about parenting adult kids simply because when my kids got to, to this age, all the resources fell off. We are so beautifully supported with our babies and our toddlers and our grade schoolers and there are blogs and Bible studies and books and every resource you could find. And then there is nothing for moms when their kids reach 18. There are, there are a few, there's a few, most of the empty nest books really focus on um, a mom's purpose after raising kids. But I think this, this learning to parent differently, this learning to mother differently with her adult kids is huge. And so that's why I started writing about it about two years ago. Yeah, I noticed when you started writing about that, I thought it was interesting. I always, I'm a big fan of following people who are talking about the next stage. So yeah. when my kids were really little, I was following Monica Swanson because she was talking about teenagers and I was yeah. at the time kind of scared about having teenagers. Yes. And so she, you know, mm -hmm. talked me off a ledge <laughs> through yes. her resources yes. and podcast. And every once in a while, I've actually gotten to talk with her personally. And that has helped me really treasure the beginnings of our teenage life. So now I'm, now I'm like, okay, you know, I'm only four years away from an 18 year old. So got to start listening to you now more. <laughs> it goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. I was just thinking yeah. like my, you know, at home, real deep parenting journey is well over half over. Yes. Cause my youngest is nine now. So in yeah, years, Ooh, girl, I mean, but here's the thing. <laughs> I'm assuming that we don't stop parenting our kids when they hit 18 or 21 or whatever, you know, the age of yes. adulthood. It looks is. very different. It looks very different. Um, and I think the hardest thing, there are a couple of things that are really difficult, letting go and knowing that our child is now responsible for their own walk with God, because that was our main job. And we, so we felt like the guardians of their spiritual life and we were, and we pour into them. And we think there's going to be a certain outcome <laughs> and it doesn't always end that way. And so that can leave moms feeling just crushed and like failures and God does not want that. But mm -hmm. so learning that our kids are responsible for their, their spiritual walk with God once they reach adulthood. And then just knowing that our role changes in that um, we really don't have the right to tell our kids what to do. And that's, that can be a very difficult transition for the mom who's been extra hovering I like to say <laughs> you know we we've had such a uh just like this idea of helicopter parenting we weren't parented the, like that at all we were just like go and live your life and you're fine <laughs> <laughs> we were just free range children I think <laughs> and then you know when I raised my kids and you raised your kids we hovered way more and so learning how to stop hovering can be very challenging to a mm. mom in that phase I see you talking about that a lot on Instagrams in your reels like okay mom when when should you speak you should not or <laughs> hold your tongue <laughs> lots of funny reels that are yeah. just about like this idea of holding your tongue so yes. why why is that important right when well I, I think it's just good to switch to being there's such power in listening there's such power in understanding our kids. And before we jump to solve their solution, to solve their problems, to find a solution, to fix it, we actually want our kids to be able to have those skills themselves. And so sometimes we interfere 
in their growth and their maturity, because we always want to rescue them and tell them what to do. But if we just step back and listen a little more, open the door and say, tell me what you think. And I think the reason some moms don't want to do this is because they're very frightened of what they might hear, because they might hear an opinion that is completely contrary to the way they were raised. And then that goes back again to oh my gosh, I'm the world's worst mom. I'm a failure because the very thing that I prayed for not to happen has actually happened. Mm. Oh, you know what I know about, you know what I know about God? He is so much bigger than us. We are not God. We are not our children's Holy spirit. Mm. And we have to step out of the way and let God have his way. I remember with one of my kids, he got in trouble in high school and he, what, he was simply egging cars. Now I know you shouldn't be, I know it's not right. And he got arrested and put in jail. And I was just devastated, just devastated. I was like, what, how could this happen? We didn't let him come home. He's like, I know I'm not coming home. I will stay here. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You'll stay there. We're not gonna, <laughs> those are the consequences. And, but I remember going to Bible study the next day and feeling just crushed as a mother and weepy. And I was crying on the way into Bible study. And this friend and her mom met me and they're like, what is wrong? And I said, my son was arrested last night. And my friend Danielle, her mom was with, and she looked at me and she was from the South. And she said to me in the sweetest little Southern drawl, she said, oh, sweetheart, he's just working on his testimony. (laughs) And I'm telling you, that was such a relief to me. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit whisper so clearly to me in that moment. He said, this is not the story that you wanted, but I'm writing his story. You just need to love him. And I was like, okay, God, show me how to love him. Because right now I'm kind of miffed. (laughs) No kidding. You just want to go in there and be like, okay, here's what's going to happen. We're not going to lay down down the law. (laughs) You will never access our kitchen again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. So, so just this, this idea of learning to say less is so powerful in that phase of motherhood, because, you know, we so often want to prevent our kids from the hardship or the consequences of their mistake, but we know that troubles and consequences are pain is a good teacher. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with all gentleness and we don't shame our kids, we don't disrespect our kids. You know what? I find a lot of moms when their kids, especially if they struggle with their faith, a lot of moms will just cut off their kids. And I think, Lord, no, 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 no. This is your baby. This is a baby who you raised. Yeah. They might be struggling right now, but our job is to love. We are called to love as moms, as Christians, we are called to love. And so that never needs to end no matter what. Well, I, when you were saying that, I was just thinking like, what would cause a mom to reject your child in that way? Is it because you're rejecting that, that fear, that shame? Like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna, I think it's shame. Like it's all like internal. I think it's not really it's all about. internal. Because in the church, we really don't do a very good job of helping parents understand that some kids will wrestle and that's normal. The church doesn't talk about it. You know, I have a a women's breakfast and one morning, one mom just opened up about it. I think maybe I started the conversation, but mom after mom after mom after mom said, me too. And so we have got to create a safe place for moms to talk about what they're really going through, no matter what your children, no matter what age your children are, because in, especially in church, we have this idea that we think everybody's doing well. (laughs) Everyone, everybody's, yeah, and it's just not true. But if we could create mom groups where we were honest Mm -hmm. and vulnerable and shared, and then we let God move in the midst of it, Mm -hmm. now that is the kind of mom group I wanna be a part of. Yeah, I've been a part of a couple of those in our women's Bible study, I was in for a few years, a couple yeah. times we had that kind of a group and it, but you could really tell the difference when it wasn't that yeah. kind of group. And there were yeah. people who just refused, refused to go deeper. Yeah. Yep. It was yep. so sad. It was like, yep. I'm done. I'm done. I can't handle this. No. Can't this Give me stuff. the real moms. I yeah. want to be with them. <laughs> exactly. So do you have any tips for 
maybe is there ever a time when you should share with your kid? Maybe that's just up to the Holy Spirit. Maybe you can't answer I that. I think question. really, I really think it is. Yeah. And especially if they ask, yes, our kids are, it's not like they don't want to know our opinion. They just want, they just want uh, to ask us, you know, just anything unsolicited always just kind of comes off. Don't you remember when you were that age and your mom yeah. would say something and you'd be like, oh, oh, I still did yesterday. My dad was saying something and I was, I interrupted him and I was like, ah. I'm like, oh, I'm I, know, you're like I still can't handle that. I know. Like I didn't ask for that. Thanks dad. And so I'm, I'm really careful. I will still, I'm like, I'll start talking. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I just said that. I just, please forgive me. I didn't mean that. Well, so, that's you know, my kids are 34 to 22. And so I'm still learning how to do it. Goodness. But I love what you just said that you can kind of backtrack a little bit and say, okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been saying that. Let's kind yes. of refresh this conversation. Yes. Yeah. Um, you don't have, if you say something, you're not committed to continuing the lecture. <laughs> like right. you're allowed right. to stop and apologize yep. and yep. that's okay. Yep. That was a long way. <laughs> I think that's it. I mean, all of this, what we're talking about is important, I think, with younger kids as well. I think that as even as when our kids are younger, we have a tendency to lecture about Me some too. things and just like talk, 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 talk. And they're like, Ooh, yeah, there she goes again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas with all pretty much any age, brevity is a powerful tool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And listening, brevity and listening. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So For you sure. also have, I've seen you talk a few times about prodigals which, you know, would be like children who are not following the faith that you yeah. raised them in. Is this something that's very personal for you or something that like you've seen, you know, your friends dealing with? Yes, it's both. It's both. I have a couple prodigals and I too, um, you know, when we were first in the early stages of it 10 years ago, just felt so alone in it and no one was talking about it. And I just didn't want other moms to feel that way. And as a leader in the church, my husband and I lead a church and we wanted to create a church where people were safe, where, where parents were safe to talk about it. And so I just think anything we can, anytime we can create that safe environment for, for moms to share, because here's what happens. Moms mistakenly assume that their worth is tied to their child's behavior. And this happens at a mom of any age. So if my child is behaving well, I'm a great mom. <laughs> if my yep. child is acting up, I'm the world's worst mom. And neither of them are true. Neither of them are true. We have to understand early, early on that our worth is not from our child's behavior. Our worth is from God completely. You are loved, chosen, accepted, redeemed because of Christ's work in you, not because of the way your children behave. And so what happens with moms when they reject the faith, it is, it is the one thing that moms never wanted to happen. We mm -hmm. prayed about it. We prayed about it for years as we taught our kids to know Jesus. And we prayed that it would stick. <laughs> and so when it happens, it does, it feels like such failure and such shame. But when we return to the stories in the Bible, there's a couple stories um, I think of the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep and the, and the lost son and the prodigal son. And we can learn so much. First of all, we look at the father in the story of the prodigal and the way that he behaved. He never nagged the son when the son said, give me my money. I'm going to leave. <laughs> it is, his father didn't say, no, no, go. I can't live without you. You're disgracing the family. <laughs> he didn't say any of that. He never said that. He well, could have say that. <laughs> yep. But he let him go. And then he remained watchful. I can just imagine him looking down the lane every day, wondering, well, I wonder if today's the day my son will return. Mm -hmm. And so I imagine that he prayed for him and, but he went on his way and he trusted God. And then when the son returned, he embraced him. He showered him with love. And so that is such an example for us with our prodigals. And then I think about the parable of the lost sheep. And it says that the shepherd bends down, picks up the sheep and places it on his shoulders mm. and carries him home. And I think that's such a beautiful picture of what Jesus does for our, for our prodigals. One day he will go and find them and he will pick them up and put them on his shoulders and carry them, carry them home. And so 
we have to remember God's heart on this matter. It's just, he's so compassionate and he doesn't give up and he doesn't quit looking. And so that is the hope that we hold on to as moms of prodigals. And for some of us, our kids are going to wrestle and they're going to reject and they're going to come up with crazy ideas <laughs> and you're not going to want to hear them, but it's really good if you do, if you say, Hey, tell me, tell me about that. What are you thinking? And you go, you're going to want to brace yourself because <laughs> you're like, okay, Lord, help me not to look shocked as they say this to me. I remember having a conversation with my dad when I was around 20 and he was like, like doing that exact thing. Like, what is she saying? <laughs> Yes. But the best thing to do is just say, thank you for sharing that with me. I know that that was a courageous thing for you to do. And then just pray and love and trust and wait on God to do it. Only God can do it. I can't change my child's heart. I cannot change my child's heart, but I can continue to love them for sure. And what I'm most happy about is that we have beautiful family bond with our five kids, mm -hmm. every last one of them. They all love each other and they all love to be with us. And that's, I think, what matters. And I can wait. I can wait for God to call them back. I trust him. You know what? That's, there's a study that I was reading recently. It was called Family, Families in Faith. And have you heard of this one? So it's a 35-year study that they did, like literally over 35 years. And it followed about five generations of uh, religious families, Christian of different denominations, mm -hmm. and Jewish and that was the thing that made the difference between prodigals and rebels was the rebels. Yeah. The people who never came back were the people who yeah. did not, whose mom said, nope, I'm done with you. Um, done with you can't you. come back unless you embrace my faith. The prodigal, yeah. because the prodigal comes back, right? Yeah. The prodigal mm -hmm. has a family that continues to embrace them. Yep. No matter what. And they, yep. they love their family. They have that strong family bond. And they also had a, like that foundation of faith that was formed when they were young. Right. So right. having that foundation of faith, knowing that they can come back, that they're accepted, yep. no matter what their beliefs yep. are, yep. those are the ones that ended up coming back in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. So that is also super hopeful. Also what you were saying, when you were talking about the prodigal son, I was reminded that in all of these stories, God is like, these characters represent God, the prodigal, yes. the father <laughs> and the shepherd, and yes. even God's children rebel. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. He, if, if God's children, if God is the perfect parent and he is, yeah. then, and his children are still rebelling and the prodigal son yeah. is still walking away from this amazing yeah. father, then yeah. it's not a reflection on us. It's not. It's and that's the key. Yep. Like you were talking about, they're working on their testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wasn't that the best thing ever? I was like, I just, that just soothed my soul. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some great things that... <laughs> In, in 30 years, right? Yes. Oh, mom, yes. remember that time? Yeah. God really worked through my heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah. amazing. So is there anything that you, you know, that you were thinking of that you wanted to share today that you didn't get a chance to share yet? You know, I think, I think I wish, I wish younger me would have known to practice more grace, mm. more kindness, more tenderness. I was so I was hard on my kids. I think I expected a lot of them. I required a lot of them, but if I could look back, I would slow down. I would laugh even more. And we laughed a lot. We had a lot of fun, <laughs> but I would not be so hard on myself. And I would know that God is at work. Even when it all looks like it's not going well, God is still at work. Amazing. Amen. <laughs> that is, I mean, it's God in Ezekiel that says, I will take your hard hearts, your hearts of stone, yep. and I will replace them with hearts of yep. flesh. It is, yep. it is his job. I mean, we got to come along for the ride and we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to fulfill as yep. well in developing that foundation, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's, it's his in them and God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So Pamela, tell us a little bit more about your podcast. And I know that you also have a, a free resource that we can access today. As yes. Well. Yes. My, I have a weekly podcast and I keep the episodes only 10 minutes long. So you Ooh. can grab it while you're loading the dishwasher or on a short walk or the little commute to work. And um, it's just really encouragement. I just, I'm an, I have the spiritual gift of exhortation. So I just really love to encourage, encourage people. So that's what that's all about. And then my current free, free resource is a four page guide and it's called your kids are grown. Now what? 
Mm. And it's kind of takes you through the three phases of midlife motherhood. I call it the empty feeling mom, the questioning mom, and the celebratory mom. We, we all kind of go through those phases and it's pretty awesome when you get to the celebratory mom. <laughs> oh, that, so what is the celebratory mom doing? Is she celebrating that her kids are gone? She, <laughs> she is happy where she's at. She okay. is confident in her calling in this season. She mm. has released her kids and she knows that she's not responsible for them anymore. And she's living her best empty nest life. Oh, you make that sound very exciting. <laughs> I know it is. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just think of all the time I'll have. <laughs> I know my husband and I walk around all the time saying we can just do whatever we want whenever we want <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's fantastic well and that is a that sounds like a fantastic resource so my kids are grown now what that is now a, what that's a great title <laughs> yeah you can find me on Instagram at p Hinkleman and then my website is pamelahinkleman.com Perfect. And I'll leave the link for the free resource as well. And to your podcast, I'll leave all the links. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, Pamela. This has been super encouraging. I mean, I don't have kids in this age, but everything that you've said has been super applicable for me as well. So thank awesome. you.